You write about ticket quotas with the need for city revenue these days. People are wondering about them more than usual. We've been getting our Uncommon Economic Indicators page peppered with people who say, oh, they're, they're definitely ticketing more in my neighborhood, traffic tickets, everything. Well, you, you, you write about sort of being told you had a ticket quota without quite being told. That's right. Uh, they were very much uh, a part of our everyday life. The number that you're supposed to get that day or that week or that month is on the top of everybody's minds. I'll tell you that much. There's a number? There's, uh, uh, there would be a different number depending on the command or the uh, detail. Um, and uh, it's absolutely on the utmost of everyone's minds. The story that you write is of congratulating officers on the 4 to 12 shift in a particular precinct for crime going down, but chastising them for summonses going down with it. And basically they say, well, we can't give you a quota, but let's just say the crime has moved to the midnight shift. Exactly. Right. Uh, it, a, a lot of uh, unofficial inferences, uh, uh, things that can't be, th of course, nothing on paper, uh, but it's always it's always out there. Is that a good thing, bad thing? Do you care? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I do care. Um, I think it's a good thing in that if they didn't have summons quotas, I'm almost sure that no cops would write tickets because they, don't, they don't want to. Why would you add that much trouble to your life? Because people hate getting summonses. It's how you get in arguments. It's how you get civilian complaints. It's how uh, fights can break out. That's how... Um, a lot of times when people argue about tickets with cops on the street in, a, in, a, in some neighborhoods, you'll be the, uh, the target of what's called air mail, which is uh, basically anonymously thrown garbage uh, coming off of rooftops. You know, if, if, if they, if they, these things seem to happen around uh, altercate, like arguments with cops. So if there weren't quotas, we wouldn't write them. That's so interesting. Paul Bacon, my guest on WNYC, former New York City police officer, author now of Bad Cop, New York's least likely police officer tells all. You also write about the Stop, Question, and Frisk worksheet, Form UF-250. The Stop and Frisk program was uh, introduced when you were on the force? No, I believe it was already in place. We just uh, were uh, encouraged to write uh, as many of them as we could. Um, and with this uh, Form UF-250, you wrote the standard of proof required for this kind of stop was reasonable suspicion. A very low bar floating somewhere between probable cause and he just looked like a perp, and tending toward the latter. Huh. Given this wide latitude, I knew we'd be expected to bring in a slew of 250s every night, exposing ourselves to more liability and strife than seemed prudent in my new frame of mind. I guess you were getting over pneumonia. But, um, but of course, stop and frisk became a big controversy also after the Sean Bell shooting. And so your description of it, um, t tell me more about how you were supposed to decide who to stop and frisk. If we could all articulate, that's, that's the big word uh, in training uh, cops how to deal with uh, certain situations. If you can, quote unquote, articulate that the perp or the suspect or anybody uh, m matched uh, any one of a number of factors, then you had reasonable suspicion to stop them. Um, uh, uh, and if, using force if needed, uh, and pat down the outside of their clothing for weapons. That's just based on meeting a very thin layer of, of proof, a slow standards of proof. And I know that this was intended to get guns off the street primarily, right? Uh, well, it's actually, the use of 250s uh, is just to keep track of all the encounters between cops and, and, and people on the street. That's, it was just a record keeping. The use thing. of the form. Yes. Right. So, did, did a kind of informal quota, though, take hold in that uh, area, too? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you did a slew of these every night? We did. What, what, what would a slew be on uh, an average, slew, night? Uh, average to me, night in Harlem? A slew, to me, uh, in my opinion, was doing three or four. Do you think you racially profiled young black males, looking back at it? Uh, no, because every neighborhood that I worked in, well, most of the neighborhoods I worked in, uh, everybody that was uh, a male a was black. Change you Did being a, a police officer change it made me an, uh, you appreciate New York City Police Department. It made me an, uh, appreciate the New York City Police Department, the doing the work, people that are actually on the ground doing the work, making me appreciate their job a lot more. What do you think the average New Yorker should know about that they don't appreciate? That cops live and work constantly in a situation where they're being doubted by other people. They're being doubted by other people. 
they're working lied to by other people. Hard, they're working long extremely hours, hard, um, doing a lot very, of long very hours, um, very, and, very thankless um, job. And um, if they happen to run into a cop who doesn't, is, is a little bit tart, try not a little bit short with them, then try not to take it personally. So why did you spend so few years on the force? So few years, three years seem like a long time Are there people would you who you recommend? Are there people would you who you recommend not join the police force? Um, no, I wouldn't. I would want everybody to give it a try. No, I wouldn't. I would want everybody to give it a try. Right. I'm a scuba right. and do do surfing now? instructor. Really? I'm a scuba in and yeah. surfing right. instructor and in Maui. Safe, I, guess. Right. I do. And your people are your students safe, I guess. I do.